Greetings from the headquarters of the World Customs Organization, or WCO, in Brussels. It gives me a great pleasure and honor to address this important meeting, and I would like to express my thanks to Dr. Sonobe, Dean and CEO of ADBI, for inviting me to speak. Resilient global supply chains is an important topic for the global customs community in addressing the changing trade landscape. Customer administrations around the world have been implementing their trade facilitation measures to improve business environment with transparency and predictability epitomized in the WTO Agreement on Trade Facilitation of 2017. The WCO has provided capacity building to its members by promoting its standards and tools, mobilizing its experts, and helping them to advance in reform and modernization. These efforts enable the development of global value chains with offshoring of manufacturing processes and associated services to economies with comparative advantage as often explained in textbooks. Consequently, the volume of international trade grew with division of labor and efficiency gain, thereby contributing to world economy. However, of recent, we have been witnessing various world events that revealed the vulnerability of supply chains, resulting in crisis in food and energy, as well as growing inflationary pressures. These world events include the COVID-19 pandemic, natural disasters exacerbated by climate change, and the war in Ukraine, and all of them contribute to supply chain dis disruptions. Hence, it is important to build resilient supply chains to respond to potential external shocks. In response to this need, the WCO has recently developed the WCO Guide to Stress Tests that will help members to design, implement, and test plans for business continuity and enhanced resilience. Today, let me talk about some of the challenges customers face in relation to establishing resilient supply chains, namely digitalization, e-commerce, environment, and conflict at borders. First, digitalization of trade and custom procedures has been progressing with the development of digital technologies along with the digital transformation of economy and society. Moreover, the arrival of COVID-19 pandemic has brought to light the fact that the simplification and digitalization of custom procedures is critical to effective and safe operations at the borders during emergency situations, thereby contributing to resilience. As a result, acceleration of digitalization will make progress towards paperless trade and contactless clearance with strengthened risk management data standardization, and disruptive technologies. In this connection, data standardization for risk management and exploring disruptive technologies are an important part of strengthening resilient supply chains for both customs and trade communities. Customs officers collect data to assess the risk of cargo to determine their way to intervention for the cargo concern. Accordingly, access to quality data in a timely manner is crucial for releasing goods of low risk expeditiously while concentrating their resources on cargo assessed to high risk. Standardizing the data set that customs requires is vital for the ease of doing business whereas it is also essential for customs to share data with other regulatory authorities. 
the WCO has developed and maintains the data model as the standardized data set that addresses the regulatory requirement of customs and other government agencies to ensure interoperability and serves the basis for single window concept. Furthermore, the adaptation to digitalization while keeping data standardization in mind has become all the more important as technologies continue to evolve. They are often called disruptive technologies as they disrupt the traditional way of doing business both for the private and the public sectors, including customs. The recent publication of the WCO WTO study report on disruptive technologies looked at blockchain, Internet of Things, and artificial intelligence, among other different technologies, and include 42 use cases from members, the private sector, and academia. Customs collect data on all cross-border movement of goods, passengers, and the cash, but their current usage is limited primarily to risk management for clearance. However, they could be used for evidence-based policymaking by customs, other government agencies, and also for business as part of open data policy, making customs as a trusted government advisor, including for building resilient supply chains. It requires working on customs health data and published statistics while addressing the concern of data privacy and security. The WCO has adopted its data strategy in this year's Council in June to embark on embracing data culture and build a data ecosystem to realize this goal. The Data and Statistic Working Group of the WCO was established earlier this month to work on producing a set of statistics on enforcement to contribute to analyzing illicit trade and guidelines on data sharing at a transactional level. The vast majority of customer administrations publish statistics on their activities such as annual seizure reports, but there is no agreed set of common statistics for customs and data at the global level. While it is similar to WCO data model that harmonizes transactional data for exchanging information, what is at stake here is more on providing public information based on aggregated data. In this way, the WCO intends to increase the visibility and the preparedness of customs at the international level through the publication of custom statistics by the WCO and at the national level, strengthen customs in its role as a government advisor. Of course, the WCO will support its members develop a data culture in customs and accompany members in their transition to data-driven organizations in close collaboration with relevant international organizations and academia. Second, the private sector has significantly advanced in digitalization during COVID-19 pandemic and one notable example is the exponential growth of e-commerce as a resilient way of delivery of goods. Most of e-commerce transactions result in the delivery of physical small packages, often requiring special procedures different from the traditional containers. As this type of trade model is beneficial for consumers and small and medium-sized enterprise or SMEs by enabling them directly participate in global trade, custom is expected to facilitate and secure e-commerce supply chain. However, e-commerce poses challenges to customs in terms of efficiently clearing its growing volume and conducting proper risk management based on the submitted commercial data from traders. 
It is imper imperative to avoid e-commerce to be used as conduit for illicit trade, including drug trafficking, small firearms, and falsified and substandard medicines. While Customs receives standardized electronic commercial data from the traditional container trade, it has been struggling to get accurate data from e-commerce packages trade as it involves consumers and SMEs who are not necessarily familiar with the custom procedures. The WCO has adopted the e-commerce framework of standards to address this issue, and custom administrations around the world are testing and piloting the implementation of the framework of standards in getting accurate electronic advanced data from e-commerce actors. The challenge is how to enhance cooperation with e-commerce actors, including post, express carrier services, and e-commerce platforms to establish resilient supply chains based on this online service. In this connection, the WCO and the Universal Postal Union, or UPU, plan to organize the Global Conference on Customs Post Cooperation next June in Tokyo. Third, third challenge, uh, climate change and uh, related environmental issues have become a major global concern and requires to make supply chains more resilient and sustainable. Customer has already been contributing to the implementation of the multilateral environmental agreements, including the Basel Convention on Waste, the Montreal Protocol on Ozone Depleting Substances, and the Washington Convention on Endangered Species. WCO is a partner with the UN Environmental Program on Green Customs Initiative to train customs officers with a right harmonized system, or HS, to identify environmentally sensitive goods. However, as the guardian of HS convention, the WCO has started consultation with the stakeholders through a series of symposia to reflect on the greening of HS and consequently global supply chains. Another important issue is transition to circular economy, where we could promote the trade of recycled, reused, refurbished, repaired goods. The current HS, or the WTO Agreement on Custom Variation, do not provide traceability of these recycled or second-hand goods, which could be a good research topic. On the ground, customs officers raise the question of difficulties in distinguishing waste from the declared goods for recycling. Well, those issues are challenging, but we need to incorporate environmental issues in resilient global supply chains. Fourth and the final challenge, we are envisaged with an increasing number of fragile borders with the presence of armed forces at, uh, at borders and those found in the conflict-affected situations. Those armed forces or insurgents often attack borders, including customs offices, as they know that it would deprive the central government of the scarce revenue sources and choke the economy of borderlands. The immediate concern would be the delivery of humanitarian aid, and the customs plays a significant role in facilitating the movement of relief goods at borders. But more fundamentally, borderland economies usually rely on small trade, often in the form of informal trade, and customs should take into this reality on the ground. Given the security situation, if military forces close borders, it would create a grievance of people living on small trade and borderlands and may result in the loss of legitimacy of central governments. Moreover, 
they could move on to high-risk business of trading illegal goods, including firearms, explosives, and narcotics. Therefore, it is essential to protect customs offices at the borders as critical infrastructure and make them function as representative of state organs. The WCO will hold a fragile border conference next January in Nigeria to raise awareness of this another aspect of resilience very much needed. To conclude, Custom plays a pivotal role in enhanced resilient global supply chains, but as uh, practitioners on the ground, custom administrations are well aware of collaboration at the borders. I hope that this conference could further enhance our dialogue and collaborative efforts. I wish you a fruitful discussion and successful meeting. Thank you for your attention.